Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be making this sharpening station out of African mahogany for the base, babinga for all of the cleats, and this cork rubber material, or crubber for short, that the stones set on. The sharpening station features this pull-out drawer and it's going to hold your supplies. What I have in here starting from the right are these sharpening stones, or my water stones rather, 1,000 and 8,000 grit. And you want to keep something between your stones so that you don't cross-contaminate the coarse grits and all of that. I have this little foam pad that came with the stones, or you could use something like a wax paper. Just make sure you have something in between those stones. This right here is my coarse diamond plate, and I use this for flattening and for flattening the water stones. Excuse me. And I also use it for coarse work, such as flattening the back of chisels, and also the Charlesworth ruler trick for putting a tiny tiny back bevel on my plain irons. You can't use this on chisels, but you can on plain irons and it saves you a lot of time. Next, I have the Lee Nielsen screwdriver that works with the honing guide. No, you don't need it, but it's super, super beautiful in my opinion. It's really nice, and, um, but you don't need it. You can just use a regular screwdriver, but I figured for the money and I might as well get it while I purchase it at the same time. This is the Lee Nielsen honing guide. Um, it came, it's got the, the jaws that ship with it on it, but I did buy a couple extra set of jaws for uh, plan or sharpening, I don't know why I keep saying planing, sharpening small blades and also for sharpening narrow blades such as my eighth of an inch chisel. So I did have to buy a couple sets of the jaws but they're, they're really cheap, 25 or $35 for each set. And I've got plenty of room right here to expand in case I get a couple more jaws for skewed angles and, and skewed bevels and stuff. And what I keep in the front is this eighth of an inch piece of brass. It's used as a shim and I cut this on the CNC machine, put a nice little hand plane design on it and it's used when you're setting your honing guide with these stops at the front. So the Lee Nielsen guide, you set your blade at a certain distance from the front of the guide to determine the angle that you're going to be sharpening. So starting at 20 degrees and going all the way down to 50 degrees, um, if you put this shim in here, let's say this is a 25 degree stop, so if you put a, a chisel in here and then butt it up against the front of your sharpening station, and if that protrudes enough to touch the front of this piece here, that means it's going to be sharpening at 25 degrees. If you put this eighth of an inch shim in there, what that's going to do is bring that back and it's going to change the angle by about two to three degrees. So if this is 25 with this in here, you put that in front of your chisel or whatever you're sharpening, and now you're sharpening at approximately 27 to 28 degrees. So this is gonna allow you to go in between each of these stops. And again, it's 25 or 20 degrees, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, all the way to 50 degrees. And to set these, Lee Nielsen gives you the specs, but what I did was made this handy jig on the CNC machine. You clamp it flush with the front of your sharpening station, butt these in there, screw them, and you've got the exact location they need to be. So I'm going to have plans uh, for the sharpening station, and I'm also going to be selling this little guide here. It's not going to be expensive, maybe 10 bucks. It's just going to make it easy for you to set your distance. You don't have to use this sharpening station. You can use whatever design you want. Uh, this is going to be handy for that, for the Lee Nielsen guide. I doubt that works for the Eclipse honing guide, even though they're pretty similar. But this is useful for the Lee Nielsen guide. And I'm also going to be selling these little brass shims. Yeah, you can make it out of wood. I just figured that, you know, with the design on it, and um, it's exactly one eighth of an inch, it's not going to move. It's brass. So it's just a nice touch. So I'm going to have links down below for the plans for the sharpening station and also these two items, the jig and the brass shim. It's an awesome build. Let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to thank our channel sponsor, Bits and Bits Company. Save 15% using coupon code SIMPLECO15 on your next order. The sharpening station is made out of African mahogany. I grab a piece of 8 quarter from the wood rack and then I break it down first at the miter saw and then I joint one face and one edge. The final dimensions for the top and the bottom panel are 12 inches square but the mahogany board obviously isn't wide enough which meant that I needed to resaw it in half and then edge glue up the pieces. After resawing the piece, I'll take it back to the joiner to flatten the face out and then run it through the planer to get it down to the half of an inch in thickness. The boards are down to the final thickness so I can clean up the other edge at the table saw. I've got both of these panels cut to six inches in width and the length is a little bit long. I'll clean that up after the glue dries. And so now I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on the edges, do a little rub joint and clamp it up. When you're clamping thin panels like this, try not to put too much pressure because sometimes you can warp it or twist it 
and just enough. I've already got glue squeeze out, so it doesn't need too much pressure. And after about a couple of hours, the glue had dried, so I took it out of the clamps, and then using my number four, I'll remove any mill marks and any glue squeeze out that had dried on the surface. I head back over to the chop saw and then I'll clean up one edge and then I'm actually going to stack both of these together to clean up the other side. That just guarantees that they're both the same exact length and if for some reason I'm less than 12 inches or more than 12 inches, they're both going to be consistent. The final two pieces to complete the box are the side panels and I cut those to 2 inches in width and then I cut them to 12 inches in length using the miter gauge with a stop lock. This ensures that all pieces are the same exact length. And then it's back to the number four to smooth the sides. I normally don't use the smoother on all of my projects, but I guess because the pieces are smaller and this was a hand tool project, maybe I just felt inspired and to break out the number four to uh, smooth the surface. Gluing up the box is fairly straightforward and with a dab of CA glue, you can knock it out quickly. I apply glue to the bottom edge of the side panels and then I put a few drops of CA glue on the surface before putting the side panel in place. The CA glue will set up in a minute or two, so that means after that minute or two, you can remove the clamps and then start to glue on the top. The CA glue trick is fine for projects like this, but overall, I probably wouldn't use it on a piece of furniture as it may potentially interfere with the bonding of the wood glue. But just a few drops on this 12 inch long piece is gonna be fine. So I'm going to leave these in some clamps for probably the rest of the night because it's already late and I'm going to start working on the front drawer. So this is that third piece of wood that I cut at the same time that I cut these pieces and it should be a snug fit but as you can see it's a little tight. So I'm going to have to take a few swipes with the hand plane to get this to fit and then I'm going to mark this to the piece to know the exact length that I need to cut at the uh, table saw. I'm at the router table and I've got a rabbiting bit installed and it's going to make a half inch wide, quarter inch deep rabbit so that the drawer sides can be flush with the drawer fronts. So it turns out after cutting the rabbit, my side panels are just a little thicker than a half of an inch. So I'm just going to hit it with my joiner plane to bring it down. A few swipes is all it's going to take. So we got about half of the joinery done for the drawer. After the glue dries on this, I'm going to be pinning it. But before we move on, we need to cut these side pieces to length. I'm going to put this back in the cabinet, mark those with a pencil, take it over to the crosscut sled at the table saw, cut those to length. And then to install the back panel, I'm going to be putting a tongue on this back panel and a groove on the side panels. And that way this will fasten in there with a tongue and groove. And then finally, what I'm going to do is put a quarter inch bit in the router table so that I can route a quarter by quarter groove that is inset a quarter of an inch from the bottom edge. And this is going to be for the bottom panel. So let's get to work. This is the rear piece that I cut a little bit shorter. It's going to stop at this groove and that way we can slide the back panel in after we glue the case up or the drawer rather. So I'm going to leave the front piece in place and these are some riding wood clamps. Super handy for stuff like this. If you're interested, I'll leave a, a link in the video description. But like I was saying earlier, we're going to be pinning this to add some strength. And with these clamps already set, it's as simple as just sliding it back in place and 
and it's good. Plant these together. Make sure it's flush at the top, but you also want to flip this over, make sure that it's not going to interfere with that groove. Now we can install the back panel very carefully. And to install this, I'm just going to use a small brass nail. And that should be all that it needs. I want to mention that I'm not concerned about wood movement on this, and that's why I'm not cutting a slot, is because this is a piece of quarter inch plywood. To reinforce the sides, I've got a couple of combination squares set, and this is so that I can mark both sides and make sure that they're in the same exact location. I got this one set to half of an inch, and that's going to give me the line for the top and the bottom, and then this one is set to three-eighths of an inch so that I can mark the center line for this eighth of an inch bit. And I'm going to drill down to, you know, I don't know, probably about this far. I didn't do any measurements. That's probably about an inch from the top edge. And then I'm going to just stick an eighth of an inch dowel in there, glue it, flush trim it, and this is going to reinforce the side pieces so that when you pull on this, it's not going to pop the front off because there's not a whole lot of uh, good glue surface on this. So. I'm at the part now where I need to lay out where each component's going to go, and this is kind of what I'm thinking, and I've just got a quarter inch shim in between that. So I'm going to have the water stones here sitting on top of each other. If I ever need the 8,000 grit, I'm always grabbing the 1,000 grit as well, so that's not that big of a deal. Diamond plate, and this ruler is going to be going somewhere in here. I'm probably going to be putting a little groove in one of these little stretchers and then just installing this on that. And in between each of these components are going to be a quarter inch thick stretcher piece. This is just the same African mahogany, one inch wide, quarter inch thick, and whatever the length needs to be, we'll figure that out shortly. And what I'm going to do is take this down to a quarter of an inch, and on each of these pieces, right where I would go to grab something, I'm going to put a slight curve like I did on my little chisel cabinet here, and I'm just going to cut that at the bandsaw, and then go over to the spindle sander and clean that up. And that's just going to allow me to quickly grab the piece and use it. So that's what I had in mind uh, for the layout of this. And now I'm going to just go over here and start working on these stretcher pieces, take them down to a quarter, cut them to one inch in width, and then put a curve on them. To glue these in, I'm going to do it in a specific order. I don't know if this is the best order, but I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to start with the bottom piece and then move on to these pieces, these two, and then finally these two down here to hold the set of jaws. Now to do this, I'm just going to put a dab of CA glue on top of the wood glue and uh, hopefully it won't take too long to set up. And I'm going to wipe off a little bit of the squeeze out now because I won't really have access to it. Put a couple drops of CA glue, real small drops, in a few places and stick it in here. And while this is setting up, I'm going to make sure that these aren't sticking. Just going to lift up a little bit. And again, I'm going to take the old marking knife and clean up any squeeze out. I know this one goes here, and on this one I'll make sure that it's 
semi-square. Now I'm just going to make a mark on this one. I'm just going to pull it out, put glue on it, and keep repeating it all the way over. These are some shims that I've been using. These are eighth of an inch, and that's kind of what I've been putting in between them. The way it sits now, the drawer can just keep on going and slide out the back. So we're going to need to install a couple of stops. Get the drawer positioned how you think looks best. I'm going to go for a little inset. This is probably uh, an eighth of an inch at most. This is the reveal that I like. I just think it looks better than being flush with the front. So I'm going to leave it where it's at and very carefully slide it over or around. And these are the Babinga pieces I'm going to glue in place. Again, using the CA glue, wood glue trick. Nothing special, it just helps it set up a whole lot faster. Now you wouldn't want to get a piece all the way across the back because we still need this panel uh, to expand and contract. So just a small piece on each side will do the trick. Wipe up any squeeze out. The final piece of the puzzle are these cleats. These cleats at the top are seven inches long, three eighths thick and a half inch wide and they're going to hold the stones in place. These little cleats at the bottom are going to be lined up using this little template so that the honing guide uh, will set the blade at a certain angle depending on the distance from the front edge of the uh, sharpening station. So the first thing we're going to install are these cleats and the uh, cleats back here are three-eighths of an inch back from the edge and I've already pre-drilled all of these and the species that I went with was a uh, babinga and I'm going to put some CA glue on here let it set up and then pre-drill and install a couple of brass screws and that since this is three-eighths of an inch thick I can kind of use it as a template or as a uh, little guide whatever you want to call it. Oh one important dimension needs to be a half inch from the edge. There we go. To set the bottom cleat it's pretty simple just use your sharpening stone give it about I don't know, I've got about a sixteenth or three thirty seconds of space behind the stone just so that it's not super difficult to move the stone in and out. And then I just used a, uh, my square to make sure that the distance from the edge is still a half of an inch. Put some CA glue on it, pre-drill and install one screw. And now I'm going to hold it and drill it for the other screw. And the last piece are installing these little cleats. And I made this little piece on the CNC machine here. I'm going to clamp this flush with the front, center it on the case, and then install these with the glue and the screws. And this is a look up close at that eighth inch brass shim that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So this right here is the cork rubber material, often called crubber. And I'm going to be installing this right here so that it's going to protect the stones from slipping. And plus it's going to protect the surface because any water that comes off the stones is going to land on here and I can wipe it up. But to cut it, I just made a template on the table saw, um, a plywood template, and then just cut it out using a box cutter. Uh, to install this, I'm just going to put a little bit of two-part epoxy uh, on the back of it and then put some weight on top. I'm going to try to keep it away from the edges so that I don't get too much squeeze out. Line it up with the edges. And finally, we can break all the edges just using the hand plane. You don't want to break the front edge too much because that's a reference point for the honing guide. But if you're not using that honing guide or you're using a different setup, you can uh, obviously break those edges as well. The finish for this project, I want something that's going to be real simple to repair because we're going to be dealing with water and there could be some damage on the surface. So I'm just using a shellac because it's super simple and easy to uh, brush on another coat 
and uh, fix any mistakes. So I'm just going uh, to use the seal coat straight from the can on the first coat and any subsequent coats I'm going to be thinning this 50-50 with denatured alcohol. And to apply it I'm just using an ox hair brush from Purdy. And I'm also going to get it down in the inside and try to get some on the uh, dividers just to make it look good. And again it's going to add a little bit of protection. Now on the case you'll notice I put some masking tape on the, uh, the crubber as they call it just so that I don't get any on the surface. The good thing about the shellac is I'm going to be able to get probably all three coats on today because it dries so fast. Every drawer needs a knob or some sort of finger pull and this one is going to be using a Brusso hardware knob and so I just put in a Forstner bit, I believe it was a half of an inch, drill down the correct depth and then use some two-part epoxy to install the knob. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I think the sharpening station is something that I've needed for quite a while. Uh, I normally put my stones in the assembly table and if it's out of sight, I find myself ignoring sharpening the chisels and they're dull and the plain irons are dull and it's just not fun. You need to stay on top of that and if you do, you don't have to go all the way back down to the aggressive stones. You can just touch them up on a strop or on your finer stones and get back to work. It's just way more enjoyable that way. One thing I want to show you is how I connect or how I attach this rather or clamp it down to the workbench because it's, obviously this is going to move. What I have are these little bench dogs on the end and I just clamp it in here. It doesn't take much pressure and now this is going to be held still. The reason why my bench is shaking is because I got the casters up to move it away from the wall so that I can show you. But with the casters down this thing just does not move at all with the casters up rather. Uh, if you don't have a workbench with bench dogs or anything like that or you don't have an invoice or any vice all you have to do is put it on the edge of your table and take a couple clamps and just clamp it in this opening and that'll work just fine. Um, so I'll have plans for the, for the sharpening station as well as the two jigs, the jig for setting these and that little brass shim if you're interested in checking those out. Uh, my very next video is going to be me showing you how I sharpen chisels and plain irons um, and hopefully it's a method that you can pick up on. It's real simple, real quick and um, it'll be using this exact sharpening station. So be on the lookout for that. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next build video.